Well, Donald Trump is a volatile president. He's impulsive. He changes course on a dime, sometimes without explaining why. He's elusive about what he really believes. And he talks and tweets about himself too much, too much for his own good or for the country's good. And by the way, he's not always a great manager. The White House actually is pretty chaotic right now. That's not just media spin. It's real. Well, if you voted for Trump, you already know this. And you probably knew it back in November when you voted for him. But what you also knew, and what is worth remembering right now, is that there are worse things than what we currently have. So the ba left badly wants to remove Donald Trump from office, not with votes in the next presidential election, as you typically see in working democracies, but they want to remove him right now, today, using legal action or impeachment or mass, mass protests or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter how it happens. By any means necessary, as they often say, the left wants to do this for a number of reasons, but mostly because they used to be in power, but they aren't anymore, and they would very much like to be so again. Okay, so let's imagine they get their way. Trump goes, and they're in charge once again. What happens then? This is worth thinking about because the Democratic Party of right now bears almost no resemblance to the Democratic Party of 10 years ago, much less the Democratic Party you grew up with. It has changed in ways that ought to worry you. The modern left is no longer an ideological movement. Instead, it's an organized movement around identity politics. That's the idea that every American is a member of a subgroup, usually a racial category, and that the point of achieving power is to win spoils for that group. Another word for this is tribalism, and it's the most divisive possible way to run a country. Because it's not about ideas and based instead on immutable characteristics, identity politics is inherently unreasonable. There's no winning arguments or even having arguments. There is only victory or defeat for the group you belong to. Your gain is my loss by definition. In the end, every group finds itself at war with every other group. It is the perfect inversion, the perfect perversion of the American ideal out of one many, and it never ends well. We know this because it is the story of much of the left, rest of the world, and the left has brought it here to America. Now, once you understand this, you begin to see the futility of dealing with modern progressives as just another political faction, people you can reason with or perhaps even convince. They don't want to argue. They want to win. The old rules that you remember, those mean nothing to them. The left doesn't believe American traditions are noble or worth preserving. On the contrary, anything old must be destroyed, and that would include the basic institutions of our society going back to colonial times. The nuclear family, freedom of speech, traditional religious faith, the rule of law, all of these are under direct and open assault by the left. This is not an exaggeration. They're not pretending anymore. They're saying it. Indeed, the left has grown so impatient, much more than ever, that it is now unable to acknowledge the basic legitimacy of any government act they disagree with. Every executive order is a new opportunity to demand massive resistance to the law itself. Every expression of conservative opinion is a chance to get somebody else fired. Every faked hate crime is the opportunity to demand new concessions that are granted even when the fraud is exposed. Now beneath all of this, which is it's the monster under the bed, it's the threat of violence. At this stage, only the fringes are calling for that, but the rest of us know it's there. We can feel it. Sometimes, especially recently, we can see it. And that is the end or the beginning of it. Violence is what separates politics from war. It's the point where hurt feelings become dead bodies, the point at which countries become ungovernable, the point where people who can start leaving for somewhere else. You don't want to get there. The most important thing our leaders can do is prevent that from happening, and yet increasingly they're refusing to. The kind of arguments we used to have in Washington centered around tax rates or trade agreements, suddenly that seems antique. Here's what we're talking about now. Watch what happened when these two progressives were asked on this show whether they would condemn political violence. Because of his race, Denny was pulled from his truck and smashed in the head with a cinder block until he sustained brain damage. It was a hate crime if there ever was one. It all happened on videotape, a helicopter caught it, and it happened in Maxine Waters' city. But she did not denounce the attack. On the contrary, she all but endorsed the attack. That puts her outside the pale. Endorsing violence is, that's the line, and she crossed it. Right. Well, I don't know if we'd have our current president if that was the line. She has a right to say what she thinks. Is that a legitimate tactic to smash windows? That's not an effective tactic. Is it legitimate? Morally uh, legitimate? That's up to the people who organize it. So it's okay. I, it's, there are times when using violence I've in America. I've never used violence. We've never advocated I'm violence. I'm asking you a philosophical question, which and I'm you're saying capable of answering. It, it, I can't answer every question of when violence is appropriate it's, or not. I can't answer whether violence is appropriate or not. Okay. Until they can answer yes unhesitatingly, we are in danger.